Let me ask you a question here this morning as we get started. What are your plans for the rest of the day? I find it uh, beautifully ironic that on a day where we're going to look at plans and planning, we start at least 10 minutes late. I don't know if you picked up on that. I I have no doubt that our friends in St. Johnsbury have. Like, hey, what's going on? Where are they? Let's go, let's go. Let me ask you again, what are your plans? for the rest of today. Before I share with you my plans for the next 45 minutes to an hour, let me get more specific and ask you, what are your plans for the next 45 minutes to an hour? Let me kind of pinpoint what I mean. You know, the typical who, what, where, when, why, how. Your plans for the next 45 minutes to an hour, who, do you plan to focus on? What do you plan to accomplish here? Where do you plan to go and grow next? When do you plan to really surrender all? And why? Why do you even bother to plan? Why plan at all? Well, before you wrestle with or perhaps in your mind come to a place of answering those rhetorical questions, let me bring you to the perspective of how do you plan? If in fact you plan, how do you plan? What kind of a planner are you? Does it matter? Well, let me offer you 10 different perspectives on plans and planning and planners. And ask yourself, where do I typically find myself in this uh, montage, if you will, of plans and planning? And or perhaps you would say, no, I actually have my own kind of different from all of those. But ask yourself, who are you as a planner? The 10 that I would bring to your attention would be the I plan not to plan plan. Right? You know, the I just wing it. I'm, I, you know, I'm just out there and I choose to plan not to plan. Ironically, that's often thought to be the way to eliminate stress. But if you've ever been in that place, you know more than likely that when you're out of control, winging it, while it may start off as fun, it oftentimes will lead to greater stress because you have no idea what's coming next. Maybe you're one who says, well, I like to have an initial plan. You know, that just kind of get you started. It's, it's really a no plan or a micro mini plan that covers up the fact that I don't plan. I just know how to get started. I have an initial plan. Is that you? Or would you perhaps be somebody who would say, not me, I'm a strategic planner. I have a strategic plan. I got this whole bad boy worked out from A to Z. In fact, I don't only have strategic plans, I have a proactive plan. Or are you maybe the other who says, I don't have a proactive plan. Truth of the matter is, I have a reactive plan. Seems to me I'm always bouncing around, dealing with something that has happened to me. So I honestly have reactive plans. Or would you be somebody who would say, in my proactive planning, I tend to have an offensive plan. Or again, in the reactive, maybe you say, well, I'm I'm a defensive planner. I'm not on offense to win. I'm just on defense to prevent losing, right? The defensive planner focuses on fences. The offensive planner, at least when it comes to being a believer, lives out the faith on offense. Are you a defensive planner or an offensive planner? Will you embrace the call to live on offense? I'm getting ahead of myself. Would you perhaps be somebody who says, I'm an emergency planner. I'm the, you know, in case of fire, break this glass kind of person. I don't really plan except for the emergencies. Or would you be one who, as I was taught in business school, sees the prudence in having a contingency plan? Right? I'm, I'm all about the contingency plan. If it's worth having a plan A, it's worth having a plan B. Right? That what I learned in business was that if you are equipped, what I say now as a missionary, if you are fluid, 
if you are ready to adapt, if you have a contingency plan, you'll do well. Problem for us as believers is there's no contingency plan when it comes to the gospel. Right? It may work well in business. It may work well in the pragmatics of living out daily life in the world. But what I pray you'll see is this tenth plan, which is the divine plan of God. I ask you, both in the next 45 minutes to an hour, in the rest of your day, and frankly, for the rest of your life, what's your plan? You see, as we continue to walk through the book of Acts, and today close out Acts chapter 14, in part summarizing Acts 13 and 14, these two chapters, you and I will see that God has a plan. God has demonstrated his plan through the Apostle Paul and his buddy Barney as they have lived out for you and me a beautiful portrait of God's plan. And my prayer is, no matter what plan or type of planner you have been, from this day forward, from this moment right now, you'll be one who embraces the divine plan of God in all that you do. It doesn't matter what your vocation is. It doesn't matter what your location is. Every child of God has been given the gift of his spirit, the empowerment that we saw at the beginning of the book of Acts. In verse 8, chapter 1, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses locally, regionally, and globally. You see, God has a plan, friends. 